Welcome to Lecture Online. Now in this example, we're going to assume that the current between A and B or V1 and V2 is not equal to zero. What we're trying to do here is find out what the current actually is when V1 and V2 are not equal to one another. The purpose then of this video is to show how to find the current across the galvanometer in a Wheatstone bridge. When we go to the circuit over here, whatever the circuit is here, it's a linear circuit, we can represent it by a Thevenin equivalent circuit, which means there's going to be a Thevenin voltage, there's going to be a Thevenin resistance, and there's going to be a load resistance. Now in this case, the load resistance is actually going to be equal to the resistance of the galvanometer. It's not a big resistance, it's a small resistance, but we do have to take account for it, which means that the current through the galvanometer, which is going to have some sort of internal resistance, is going to be equal to the voltage of the circuit, which is going to be the Thevenin voltage, divided by the total resistance of the circuit, which is the total of the Thevenin resistance plus the resistance in the galvanometer. Which means we need to take our Wheatstone bridge circuit and find the Thevenin resistance and find the Thevenin voltage. The Thevenin resistance can be found by removing the voltage source, or setting the voltage source equal to zero, and then opening the circuit between A and B, between point V1 and point V2. We then find the resistance across this gap, and notice that if I take this circuit right here, which has resistance R1 and R3, like we have over here, R2 and Rx, like we have over there, we can then find the equivalent resistance by redrawing the circuit, starting from A, and then terminating at B. Notice that when I pass either resistance R1 or R2, I get to the point where I can be on either side of the circuit, which means I can be right here between the two, and then choose to go to B, either to Rx or R3, which means that these two resistors are in parallel, these two resistors are in parallel, but the two combinations are in series. To find the total resistance, we need to find the equivalent resistance of this, the equivalent resistance of this, and add it together. Since they're two in parallel, we can find the equivalent resistance by taking the product over the sum. Total resistance, which means the Thevenin resistance, would be the product of these two divided by the sum of those two added to the product of these two divided by the sum of those two. So this becomes a Thevenin resistance. Next, we need to find the Thevenin voltage. What we need to do there then is reinsert the voltage source and find the voltage difference between A and B. We can do that by saying that the voltage here the voltage at A is equal to the voltage of the source times the ratio of the resistance R2 divided by the total resistance on the left side. I can find VB here by taking the voltage of the source times the ratio of R sub X divided by the total resistance. If I then take the difference between the two, that will then be the Thevenin resistance. V Thevenin is equal to VA minus VB, assuming that VA is higher than VB and that would be equal to V times R2 divided by R1 plus R2 minus V times Rx divided by R3 plus Rx. I simply take the difference of the two voltages. I can then factor out AV. I can then say that the Thevenin voltage is equal to V times the quantity R2 divided by R1 plus R2 minus Rx divided by R3 plus Rx. This will now be the Thevenin voltage. This here is the Thevenin resistance. And then all I have to do is plug those two quantities into this equation right here, where the current through the galvanometer is equal to the Thevenin voltage, which is this quantity right here, which is the voltage times R2 divided by R1 plus R2 minus Rx divided by R3 plus Rx. This will be the Thevenin voltage divided by the sum of the two resistances. The Thevenin resistance is this right here, which is R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2 plus R3 times Rx divided by R3 plus Rx, which is the Thevenin resistance, and add that to the resistance of the galvanometer. And this will then give us the total current through the galvanometer. Of course, that equation looks kind of mean and ugly, but that's okay. It's actually straightforward. All we need to do is find out what the values are of the voltage in the circuit and the values of the various resistances and the value of the resi resistance 
of the galvanometer, and we could just plug that in and get the current through the galvanometer. But notice that we figured out what it was equal to simply by using the Thevenin equivalent circuit and turning this into something that looks like this, which makes it a lot easier to find the current through the galvanometer. Any other method to use to try to find the current through the galvanometer would be quite hard. This is definitely the preferred method. That's how we do that.